Hello. The book of Proverbs, part three. Proverbs 25. And of course, here's the third part of Proverbs. <laughs> Proverbs 25, 1. These are also Proverbs of Solomon, which the man of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied out. If we go back to Second Kings, Father God, as we look at your word, may you edify, encourage, and enlighten us here in Proverbs. As we close this book, may you give us concluding insight here. In Christ's name, amen. So, 2 Kings. You look at 2 Kings. Hold on just a second. I have to look, 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 look. 2 Kings. You look at verse 18. <laughs> 2 Kings 18, verse 1, Hezekiah begins to reign. He reigns 29 years in Jerusalem. He's 25 years old. And he has these reforms. We saw that back in 2 Kings when we went way long ago. Hezekiah reformed. Jerusalem and Judah he put away the images that his father had made, Ahaz. Verse 5, he trusted in the Lord God of Israel so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah nor any that were before him. He gets rid of that brazen serpent that Moses had made. See, God told Moses to make it. And what, all those hundreds of years later, Israel was worshipping it. So Hezekiah made the reforms. Alright. Hezekiah was a good king. So Hezekiah was a believer. And it was in the time of Hezekiah's reign there. 2 Kings 18. Oh, well let me show you another one. Okay, go to 2 Chronicles. There's more information about him. Here, Second Chronicles. We look at Second Chronicles. Ahaz was evil. That was Hezekiah's father, the king of Judah. Look at Second Chronicles 29 and 30, 31, especially 29 and 30 there. And, yeah, some into 31. Those are the reforms of Hezekiah in Jerusalem. As well as some over in 32, 33. But that, that's, that's enough. So, Hezekiah. By the way, these are copies. See, they copied out. God preserved His Word through a multiplicity of copy, copies. Hezekiah. had scribes who were writing copies of what Solomon had written hundred something years earlier. And so this became part of the book of Proverbs as well. So Solomon is dead. Solomon wrote those other chapters. Well Solomon's dead and now Solomon wrote these chapters and Hezekiah and his men, they find them and they copy them and add them to the book of Proverbs here. So you can, you can read through Proverbs 25. I would like to move a little faster in Proverbs. Uh, well, we'll look at verse 11. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. Beautiful. 
As an earring of gold and as an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. Wants to straighten up? Yep, it'll, it'll, it'll decorate his life. The, the advice will decorate his life because he, he wants to reform. See, you don't want to hear anything? Well, that's your problem. <clears throat> By long forbearing is a prince persuaded, 15, and a soft tongue breaketh the bone. Hast thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee. Lest thou be filled therewith and vomit it out. And uh, verse 27, it's not good to eat much honey. <laughs> the 17, withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee and so hate thee. You're a pest. Stop coming over here so often. <laughs> A man that beareth false witness against his neighbor is a maul and a sword and a sharp arrow weapon. <laughs> How about this one? Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot without joint. <laughs> a foot out of joint, not dependable, not reliable. As he that taketh away a garment in cold weather as vinegar upon nitre, that's like baking soda. So is he that singeth songs to a heavy heart. It's an explosive reaction there. Instead of comforting the heavy heart, you sing it songs to it. See, if thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals on fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. Come over to Romans 12. Remember what I said? You can quote Proverbs to some degree, but be careful. Watch how the Holy Spirit moved the Apostle Paul to quote Proverbs. Proverbs 12, 17. Romans 12, 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of men. Walk as who you are in Christ because that is the truth. You're not lost, you're saved. Walk like who you are. Don't walk like who you aren't. If it be possible as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written in Deuteronomy, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. That's Deuteronomy 32, 35. 20. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. There's Proverbs 25. 21 and 22 there. Paul quoted that. So, look at verse 20. Three, the north wind driveth away rain, so doth an angry countenance, a backbiting tongue. It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman and in a wide house. As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. A righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain and a corrupt spring. He that hath no rule over his own spirit, no self-control, is like a city that is broken down and without walls. No defense. He's vulnerable. Chapter 26, Psalm, uh, Proverbs 26. I'm getting tired. As snow is in summer, and as rain in harvest. I'm going to wake myself up. So honor is not seemly for a fool. I'm going to walk around, make myself wake up. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou, be, lest thou also be like unto him. See, don't agree with him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceits. Give him the truth and let him go and argue with that. Otherwise, he's going to think that he's right. But you put some corrective information within his sight and within his hearing 
And uh, that word will work on him. The Holy Spirit will work on him. And whether he believes it or not, that's not your problem. You tell them the truth and you let them choke on it. And let them go fight with God about it. That goes for saved and lost people alike. They don't want to get saved. They want to stay lost. But the saved people want to stay ignorant. Well, you tell them and then you move along. You don't waste time on people who don't want to hear anything. You make wise use of your time. We only have so much time on earth and so many people that we can reach. <laughs> he that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and drinketh damage. The legs of the lame, the legs of the lame are not equal. So is a parable in the mouth of fools. They don't match. So he that bindeth a stone in a sling. So is he that giveth honor to a fool. You, you, tie the, you tie the stone to the sling. Well then when you, you, you pop the... It's tied. It won't do anything. It's useless. As a thorn goeth up into the hand of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. They're numb to it. That's what it is. The great God that formed all things both rewardeth the fool and rewardeth transgressors. He'll pay them in full. They're sin. Now listen. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Oh. You want to gag reading that, huh? Yum, yum, yum. The dog loves to eat the vomit. And I've seen that and that's horrible. They eat, they eat worse things than that. So, you know, <clears throat> a fool returneth to his folly. It's very unsightly, and yet he goes. In 2 Peter 2.22, the Holy Spirit quotes that verse as applying to those who are deceived by the Antichrist and his religious system. They are deceived. They, they, that's the folly. The folly is believing that the Antichrist is the true Messiah. And that Jesus Christ is the false one. See, and it's flip-flopped. 2 Thessalonians 2 says, God gave them over to the lie because they didn't want the truth. See now a man wise in his own conceit, there is more hope of a fool than of him. Yeah, they think they're on the right path. There's the true Messiah. He's sitting. 2 Thessalonians 2. He's sitting in the temple showing himself that he's God. He exalts himself above all that is called God or that's worshipped. And there's the Antichrist there. And Israel's fallen for the lie. They, they're going to worship and serve the creature more than the creator. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. <laughs> yeah. He never moves. The only thing he does is he, he rotates on a fixed axis <laughs> he never he never changes location never gets out of bed the slothful hides his hand in his bosom it grieves him to bring it again to his mouth the slugger sluggard that's the the lazy man is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason he that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh a dog by the ears as a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, so is the man that deceiveth his neighbor and saith, Am not I in sport? Where no wood is, there the fire goes out. So where is no tail bearer, the strife ceases. If you don't have any, any fuel there, there's no fire. We don't have somebody stirring up the fire, the gossiper. No, nobody's fighting. <laughs> As coals are to the burning coals, and with the fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the uttermost parts of the belly. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a potsherd covered with silver draws. He that hateth dissembleth with his lips, and layeth up deceit within him. Look at 27. Whosoever diggeth a pit shall fall therein. <laughs> 
and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. <laughs> a lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, character assassination, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And that's in James chapter 2 as well. That's that time to come. The ages to come there. A stone is heavy. Oh, look at verse 2. Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth. A stranger, and not thine own lips. A stone is heavy, and the sand weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than them both. Wrath is cruel, and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before in the open rebuke is better than secret love. It's better to tell the truth and offend than love somebody and never tell them. It's better to tell the truth. Faithful. It's better to tell the truth even if it offends. That, that's, that I should have said. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Verse 12, a prudent man foreseeth the evil he sees out into the distance and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Oh, we'll just keep on going. And then there, yeah. There'll be some trouble there. A continual dropping in a re very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. Whosoever hideth her hideth the wind and the ointment of his right hand which bereath itself. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Whoso keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof, so he that waiteth on his master shall be honored. As in water, face answereth to face, so the heart of man to man. The heart is the reflection of the man, just like water is the mirror of the face. The face looks at the water and it sees itself. The man's heart exposes him. Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. As the finding pot for silver and the furnace for gold, so is a man to his praise. Though thou shouldest bray, Pound a fool in a mortar. Remember the pestle and mortar? Like crushing herbs or, or medicine. In a mortar among wheat with the pestle. Yet will not his foolishness depart from him. You can pound him, pound him, pound him, and you can't get the foolishness out of him. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks, and look well to thy herds. For riches are not forever, and doth the crown endure to every generation. 28. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. For the transgression of a land, many are the princes thereof, but a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof, shall be prolonged. A poor man that oppresses the poor is like a sweeping rain which leaveth no food. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. Better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways. Whosoever keepeth the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion of riotous women shameth his father. He that by usury and unjust gain increases his substance, he shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. See the legalism there? That's why I tell you, the legalism involved in Proverbs, that's how we know Proverbs is not grace-oriented material. We can use Proverbs with caution, but see, that takes some spiritual maturity discernment. Look, 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 look at Romans 12, how Paul quoted Proverbs. Right? You don't throw away Proverbs. You just, you use it, but rightly divide it. A man that doeth violence to the blood of any person shall flee to the pit. 17. Let no man stay him. 20. A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. 
That's a good verse for people who always say, Oh, I wish I would win the lottery. He that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Greed. Greedy. Well, you know what? If you do win the lottery, you're not just going to win a lot of money. You'll win a lot of friends. And they'll always be at your door. Hey, can I borrow some money? A lot of dependents. And then you know what? There'll be people who come along who are less kind. And they'll stick a gun in your face or a knife against your back and they'll say, give me everything you have. You see, wealth, the two risks. One, your friends will come along and borrow it and you have nothing. And two, the thief will come along and steal it and you have nothing. Always worrying about losing it one way or the other. We'll see that in Ecclesiastes. Verse 10, Whosoever causes the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit, but the upright shall have good things in possession. When righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory, but when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. He that cometh, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Now see, confessing sins there, that's not applicable to us. We don't confess our sins. God has forgiven us our sins. Now we change our mind. Well, yes, we did something wrong. Now we're going we're gonna to take some sound Bible doctrine, Pauline doctrine, and do what's right. See, you get rid of what was wrong, and you do right. See, bad behavior replaced by good behavior. Put off the old man, put on the new man. Colossians, Ephesians, that's for, that's for believers. For lost people, it's not stop sin and get saved. It's get saved and then you can stop those sins. Trust Christ, then you can have the victory over daily sins. 22, again, He that hasteth to be rich hath an evil eye, and considereth not that poverty shall come upon him. He that rebuketh a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flattereth with the tongue. 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whosoever walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. When the wicked rise, men hide themselves. 28. But when they perish, the righteous increase. Alright, 29. We're almost through Proverbs. And this will probably be a shorter lesson than expected, but that's all right. Proverbs 29, verse 1. There's some great verses again. This is true in any age. He that being often reproved, hardens his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Stiff-necked is what the Old Testament term is. Israel was stiff-necked. They didn't want to hear. And, and I've made that analogy before. I've given that analogy before. God has Israel, and he's pulling her along, and she's going like this, and he's pulling like this. So, this way, and she's pulling back. Stiff-necked. I'm not going to do what you want me to do. Often reproved. This is what you're doing wrong. This is what you're doing wrong. This is what you're doing wrong. And you have to keep telling them, harden the neck. Stiff. It's, it's going to be to the point where it's immovable. It's going to be like that. And you... See? And that, they will be... He that being often reproved hardens his neck. The reproof is having no effect on him. Shall suddenly be destroyed in that without remedy. That's true. Yep. Almost dropped the... So... Let's say somebody has heard the gospel one time, the gospel of grace. Oh no, I don't care to hear that. I'm working my way, brother. They hear the gospel a second time. Oh no, don't want to hear that. My church says. The third time. You know, we could talk about the atheist or whoever. I don't believe in God. Don't come to me with that Bible thumping. 
Whoever, whoever rejects the gospel, this is true of it, whoever rejects the gospel, so they hear the gospel 15 times, 20 times, 30 times, 40 times, 100, 500, 1,000, 10,000 times. Let's say it's a person who lives a whole century. How many times did they hear that gospel message? And just like Pharaoh in Egypt, Moses would say, The Lord God says, Let my people go, Pharaoh. And Pharaoh would reply, No. Who is the Lord? I'm not letting Israel go. Said haughtiness, sinful pride. Pharaoh says, I'm not letting them go. 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 Over and over and over. Pharaoh says, No, 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 no. And it's and we saw in Exodus. He hardened his heart and God hardened his heart. How did God harden his heart? It was with that word. That word would put pressure on Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh would have that choice. Yes, no. And every time he'd side with the no. Uh-uh. No. Uh-uh. No. Uh-uh. No. No, no, no. Well, you hear the gospel enough? Now, that's for lost people. Let's say saved people. They hear sound Bible doctrine, they hear grace, and yet, nope, they say, I want to go back to the law. I want to go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I want to go to the Old Testament, uh, Genesis through Malachi. And really, yeah, Matthew through John or, or Old Testament too. They're before the cross. Hebrews 9 says, before the cross, that was the Old Testament. The Old Testament, the New Testament can't begin until after the cross. But, I don't want to get technical there. The point is, they're hearing the sound doctrine and they're re rejecting it, whether saved or lost. And see, they're being, they're, they're, they're hardening their neck and shall, be, shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. And see, the lost person, they'll go to hell in the lake of fire. The Christian, no, they won't die and go to hell. But you know what? Their life will, their Christian life will fall apart. Because they're not operating on the doctrine God gave them, grace. They're operating on the basis of legalism, the law. Something God never told them. See, they're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Using the Bible, being scriptural, not dispensational. And there's trouble there. All right. Let me get back to Proverbs. Chapter 29, verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Whosoever loveth wisdom rejoices his father, but he that keepeth his company with harlots spendeth his substance. Now the prodigal son, that's Israel, wasting their time on nonsense. Spiritual whoredom. The king by judgment establishes the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. Uh, the man that flatters his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. Drop down to verse 9. If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. Hmm. The wise man is just going to keep on with the fool. And the fool doesn't want to hear. A fool waters all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it all in till afterward. Verse 11. Twelve, if a ruler hearkens to lies, all his servants are wicked. The poor and the deceitful man meet together, the Lord lightens both their eyes. The king that faithfully judgeth the poor, his throne shall be established forever. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his shame, <laughs> bringeth his mother to shame. Yep, no discipline. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give the light unto thy soul. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. A servant will not be corrected by words, for though he understand, he will not answer. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? Rash in his words? Careless, there is more hope of a fool than of him. 22. An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall, 
uphold the humble in spirit. Whoso is partner with a thief, hateth his own soul, he heareth cursings, cursing, and bewrayeth it not. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Don't rely on the Antichrist, see? And don't worry about the Antichrist. Don't fear him, Israel. You put your trust in the Lord, you'll make it. He'll bring you through that time of trouble. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked. All right, Proverbs 30. The words of Agur, the son of Jacob, Jakey, even the prophecy. Who is, who is Agur? We don't know. Just leave it at that. The man spake unto Ithiel, even unto Ithiel and Ocho. Surely I am more brutish than any man, and have not the understanding of a man. This is the audience of wisdom. I neither learn wisdom, nor have the knowledge of the holy. Verse 5, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. Add thou not unto His words, lest He reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Yeah, that, that's a good one for the cults there, like the Book of Mormon. Oh, here's another testament of Jesus Christ. Or the Quran, which claims to be a correction of the Old Testament. Whatever. The modern versions, they add to God's Word, they take from God's Word, they water down God's Word, they question God's Word, they deny God's Word. Genesis 3, just like Satan encouraged Eve to do. Wishy-washy in doctrine. Well, trouble. 14. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their, draw th teeth, their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. The horse leech hath two daughters, saying, Give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not, it is enough. The grave is never satisfied, the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not, it is enough. 17, now here, here's one. The eye that mocketh at his father, and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. Now see, that's not true today. You see, you can use that and mock the Bible and say, uh, let, let's, let's suppose the delinquent goes and mocks his mother, mocks his father, despises to obey his mother, and he mocks. He says, ha ha, well God's word says, the raven doesn't come and peck out my eye, and no raven comes. But see, rightly divided, there's a time This is applicable. All right. There be three things which are too wonderful for me. Yea, four which I know not. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent on a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. No, they, they leave no trace. See what happens? There's no evidence. No evidence concealed there. The way of a man with a maid, well, that's sexual connection. The way of an eagle in the air, you can't trace that. There's, there's no lasting evidence there. See, the way of a serpent on a rock, it doesn't leave a, a trail. The way of a ship in the midst of the sea, such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eats and she wipes her mouth. She hides. And then she's a hypocrite. She says, I've done nothing wrong. For three things the earth is disquieted, and for four which, with which it cannot bear. A servant when he reigneth, and a fool when he is filled with meat, an odious woman when she is married, and a handmaid that is heir to her mistress. See? Reversals, in other words. Or strange. In verse 24, there are four things which are little on the earth but are exceeding wise. The answer of people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in summer. The conies are but a feeble folk, yet make their houses 
in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet they go forth all of them by bands. The spider taketh hold with her hands and is in the king's palaces. See, small beings, but they're wise. See, they know how to plan, they know how to coordinate, they know how to prepare, organize. All right, then three things which go well, four are comely and going. The lion which is strongest among beasts and turneth not away from for any, a greyhound and an he-goat also and a king against whom there is no rising up. If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast done, hast thought evil, lay thine hand upon thy mouth. Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter, and the wringing of the nose bringeth forth blood. So the forcing of wrath bringeth forth strife. Yeah, you start something, and something will be started there. All right, the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Now, King Lemuel. We would assume, and, and there's, there's really no way to know for absolute certainty, L Lemuel, Lemuel may be Solomon. Lemuel belonging to God, Hebrew, Lemuel, Elohim, God. The prophecy that his mother taught him. So Bathsheba, Sol Bathsheba taught this to Solomon. What, my son, and what? the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows. Give not thy strength to women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law. See, perverting the judgment, wine clouds the mind, strong drink. It's not good for rulers to engage in this. Nor, it is not good for princes to drink wine or for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. Yes, yeah, see, he's dying. And wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open thy mouth for the dumb and the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth. Judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and needy. All right, so that was about a wise king. Now we will see the woman here, the virtuous woman. 10 to 31, that's 22 verses. This is an acrostic. Each verse begins with the next letter of the Hebrew al alphabet. So we go from Aleph all the way to the end. In English, we'd say A to Z, all right? <laughs> but the Hebrew alphabet has 22 letters, not 26, obviously, like us. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. A hard worker. Now see, this is, this is, um, this would describe a woman even today. A godly woman. Somebody whom God the Holy Spirit is working through. What would she look like? Well, you, you can go look in Ephesians 5. The wife and the, the mother there, as well as Titus 2 and Colossians 3. But listen to Proverbs 31. You might have heard of a Proverbs 31 woman. Well, he, he, here is the Proverbs 31 woman that, that they're referring to. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household. She provides, and a portion to her maids. She considers a field and buys it. A businesswoman, see, a wise woman, with the fruit of her hands she plants a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. 
She perceives that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy, benevolent, kind, caring person. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She's made provision for them in the cold weather. Winter time, for example, she maketh herself coverings of ta uh, tapestry. Tapestry. Her clothes, I'm getting tired and we're almost done. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. See, she's maturing as the years have passed. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness, slothfulness, laziness. She's diligent. Her children arise up her, and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Now, that's how the book of Proverbs ends. Proverbs is over. The virtuous woman is in stark contrast to the strange woman, the whore. The believing Jewish woman there, the godly woman, that's a picture of Israel's believing remnant staying pure, virtuous. Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon are being introduced there. So, I'll leave you, remember Proverbs, wisdom, divine and legalistic wisdom, for Israel in the last days in order to avoid the deception that the Antichrist, Satan through the Antichrist, is pushing them to embrace. And we'll see that worldly wisdom in Ecclesiastes and we'll see Israel's purity, her chastity, in Song of Solomon, waiting for Messiah to return. She has been faithful to him and he will marry her he will marry her to the land, and then he will marry her and inherit the land through her. All right, so we're laying the groundwork for Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon now. All right, that's enough. A lot of material. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time of study. May your word encourage us to be separate from the evil world system just as Israel was urged over and over again in time past and will be in the ages to come stay away from that evil world system may we be faithful to your word as you would want Israel to be faithful to, you, to your word to her, to her in her program Thank you, and Christ be with. And that's it. Proverbs is over.